Amen. Aren't you glad? That he'll give us what we need. I'm thankful this morning to know that God loves me better than I love him. I'm thankful to know his love is not based on how I love him back. If you missed Sunday school this morning, if you missed opening up for Sunday school, you missed a lot. Let me encourage you to come out for Sunday school. Let me encourage you to be here before and help pray. This morning, Brother Scott opened up with love. Brother Sammy, in his lesson, talked about love. And today, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Leviticus, chapter number 17. And we're going to look on the subject of Christ's blood. But I was thinking as Brother Scott was opening up and Brother Sammy was teaching, I, I, I guess a better title and as with songs that have been sung about salvation, about redemption, about love, a, a better title would be Loved Proven. Because that's exactly what Christ's blood did. He showed his love for you and I by giving himself upon the cross of Calvary. And we see here in the book of Leviticus, and I, I, uh, we know this, this book is a book that's about sacrifices and about atonement and about all the things that the children of God were supposed to do, the things that they were commanded to do. But you and I here, they, they are lessons that, they are things that we can glean from the book of Leviticus, by the way. I know you've probably got a bunch of notes where other preachers have preached out of Leviticus. I'll be honest with you, I've carried this Bible for over 20 years, and I've got one note in it for one preacher that preached in it. I know it may have been referred to, but I, we want to take our text this morning out of chapter number 17, and, and we want to look about how we handle the blood. What do we do with the blood? In, in chapter number 17, we're not going to read the whole chapter, but if you have time, go back and read the whole chapter. We're going to start in verse number 10. And whatsoever man there be in the house of Israel, or the strangers... Notice that the strangers that sojourn among you that eateth any manner of blood. He said, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth. Now notice what he said, that eateth blood and will cut him off from among his people. Notice verse number 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement, now notice what the blood does, to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for your soul. Therefore, I said unto the children of Israel, now don't you say, he said no soul, that's nobody, not one person, nobody. No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger. Folks, what are we? We are pilgrims and strangers, by the way. And that sojourneth among you eat blood. And whatsoever man there, uh, make sure I don't turn too many pages, which mine get stuck here. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you which hunteth. Now, who's he talking? Now, I'm talking to you men that go out, or, or maybe ladies that goes out and hunts, that takes an animal. Notice what he says here about that. Which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that, he said, that may be eaten, shall even pour out the blood thereof. Now, notice what he's supposed to do. And cover it up. He said, don't just spill it upon the ground, but you need to take time to cover it up with dust, cover it up with dirt, bury that blood. He gives us a reason 
For it is the life of all flesh of the blood. For it is the life thereof. And therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. And whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. And every soul that eateth that which is died of itself, or which is torn with the beast, whether it be... Uh, one of your own country or a stranger, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean even to, even to the evening, even <laughs> until the evening. He said, then shall he be clean. But if he wash them not or bathe, his, or, nor bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his iniquity. So what does he say? He said, you do this and you'll, be, you'll stand guilty before God. So let me go back and read uh, again verse number 11. And verse number 11 again talks about the blood. It talks about the atonement power of the blood for the, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Again verse number 11. And I have given it to you given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. He said for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for your soul. So when we look at this thing of blood and we look at this thing uh, uh, and, and we sometimes we take it as, as so for granted. God holds the blood in high respect, by the way. God holds the blood as in, uh, I will say, in a sacred, honored area because why? Because his son shed his blood upon Calvary's cross for you and I. His son gave his blood that you and I, that blood that is in life. If you don't believe me, you bleed out and you'll die. Right. You've got to have blood. Uh, if you get low on your blood, you get weak, you get sleepy. Folks, the life is in the blood and, he, and God holds that blood of, of his son at a high cost. It cost him his life. In this book here that we have, and I'm talking about this blessed old book which I hold in my hand, this, this Bible, this whole book from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, there is a, a bloodline that runs through this whole book. Uh, it, it goes all the way from Genesis and it stops here. Well, it doesn't stop. It goes on through Leviticus. And Leviticus is, is talking about the blood here. And it's talking about Christ. And in, in the book of Leviticus, you'll find Christ Jesus as your high priest, by the way. And what do you mean by the high priest? The high priest was the one who would take the blood into the Holy of Holies and he would scatter it upon the horns and he would present the blood as a sacrifice to God. Yeah. But I want to say this is no ordinary blood. This is not the blood of bulls or goats or deer or anything else. This is his own <laughs> precious blood that he went and he presented unto the Father. That you and I may have life eternal. It's Christ's blood where he's paid the price. And I know, well, preacher, you're talking about all this blood and, and all this gore. And he said, that's a gory thing. No, but can I say it's a glory thing, by the way, to him. This is what Paul said in Galatians chapter number 4. Uh, chapter number 6, excuse me, verse number 14. He said, but God forbid that I should glory. He said, save in the cross. He said, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the whole world is crucified. Uh, by the way, when Christ died upon the cross of Calvary, when he shed his blood, he didn't just shed it for me. He didn't just shed it for you. He shed it for the whole world that they might be saved. But let me say this. You've got to accept his gift of salvation. He said, by whom the whole world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Paul said, here, here, I've got a responsibility. You have, if you're a child of God this morning, if you've been saved by grace, washed in the blood, have you received that gift of salvation uh, because of the blood? You've got a responsibility, not just to yourself, but to those you've come across, to give them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just not the preachers. It's just not the deacons. It's just not the Sunday school teachers. It's all. Paul said, I've got a responsibility to give you the gospel. We all have. 
And sometimes, most of the time, let me, do, let me just get it on down all the time, I fall short of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's talking about that not eating of the blood and not taking that blood for... That, that's not just something here that he's come up with in the book of Leviticus, by the way. No, it goes back even farther than that. It goes back... We can go all the way back to Noah in Genesis chapter number 9. When Noah had come off the ark, here's what God said. He said, but the flesh with the life thereof. He said, which is the blood thereof. Ye shall not eat. So it's nothing new. It's nothing something that's come up. It, it's, not, it's not nothing that, that, that God has just put upon you and I. It doesn't matter. He said, when, when, you, when you eat the meat, he said, cook the blood out of it. Boy, that takes, what, that takes those rare steaks away, doesn't it? I don't know how everybody eats them. I'll be honest with you. We went, we went to a place one time with a guy. And he ordered his steak rare. And I thought it moved when he stuck a knife in it. I couldn't watch him eat it. He ate way too much blood. And, and I'm not just making, I, folks, it's not me, but this is what the Word of God says. Don't eat the blood. Why? Because the blood is sacred to him. Because it costs Jesus Christ his blood. You see, the blood makes atonement for you and I. It makes reconciliation for you and I. Amen. He says, this book. You know, you can take this Bible here. You can take that word of God that you have. And I'm not telling you that. I'm talking figuratively here. And this is what this is. This is a shadow. This is a picture of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was given for you and I. But you can take this Bible and you could cut it anywhere. And I'm not telling you to literally do that. He's, but you could cut it anywhere and it would bleed the blood of Christ. Yes. It would bleed Jesus. This book is about him, by the way. All the way through Genesis, all the way to the end of Revelation, it's about him. He is in the book. And we find here that, that he's talking about God promised the blood. Now, when was the blood, when was, when was the blood promised? Well, Revelation chapter number 13 tells you and I when the blood was promised. Well, let me just read here. Chapter number 13, verse number 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. He said, no, nah, he's not talking about Christ here. We're talking about a time you don't want to be in. Whose names are not written in the book of, he said, the book of life of the Lamb. Now, don't you notice, which was slain before the foundations of the world. That blood was already shed. It was as good as spilled. It was as good as shed for you and I before any foundations of this world had ever been laid. Way before the book of Job. He says, that's when, it, you know, folks, you know, we don't need a new gospel. We don't need a new way. We don't need a new attraction. What we need is the word of God. What we need to have here. Matter of fact, this word goes, the blood goes back farther than even this earth itself because he was slain before the foundations of the world. Notice what he said here. He says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it uh, to you upon the altar to make atonement. He said, Make atonement for your souls. And it is the blood that maketh an atonement. Again, he says it again. For the soul. And what is that? Well, that brings you and I, Christ's blood, brings you and I and God back into agreement. What do you mean in grieving? Well, one, we need to realize we're a sinner. We need to agree with God that we're, we're no good. I'm no good. I need to agree with God that I can't do it upon my own good works. I can't do it upon my own good actions. I can't do it. But I, I agree with God that, hey, I, I need him. And not only is it we come in agreement, but now we come in to concord together. See, it's the blood that 
reconciles us back to God. Adam used to walk with God until sin come in and was separated. Enoch walked with God. I like what the Bible says. Then he was not for God took him. So we see here, it's that atonement, it's that blood. And what happens is that we were, you and I, at one time, well, let me say, when we were born into this earth, the first breath that you took when you was born, you was at enmity, I was at enmity, we were an enemy of God. Yes, that little cute baby that everybody oohs and ahs over, kisses, loves to hold, was an enemy of God. But thanks be to God, Christ's blood. When that child becomes at the age, when that child realizes he's lost or she's lost, and she can be and he can be reconciled back unto God. Isn't that wonderful? What the blood of Jesus Christ can do for you and I. You see, it took the blood. It took, it took the blood when Adam and Eve, when sin come to this world, it took the blood to cover them. Now, they tried to do it on their own selves. They tried to cover themselves by sewing this fig leaves together. And what's that? Well, that's just a self-righteous actor trying to do something their own way. Yeah. It didn't work. It took some blood. It took the blood of an animal that Christ killed to, to make atonement for them. And not only did the blood make atonement, but it took the, those fig leaves that they tried to sew together to cover their nakedness. It took the skins of that animal to clothe them. You see, God made a way for you and I to be reconciled back unto him. And that's through his blood. And we, we go back and we can read about the, those two boys that they had. Cain and Abel. You remember Cain and Abel? Both of them brought a sacrifice unto God. Abel brought of his flock. Abel brought the blood back to God as a sacrifice unto him. But oh, Cain, what did Cain do? Cain brought from the fruit of the ground. Oh, people say, well, he's just doing the best he can. But no, he was not. He was disobedient to God. Cain brought those vegetables, that fruit of the ground, just like the fig leaves. They weren't going to cover the sin. It wasn't going to cover the nakedness. You see, plants can't do it. Plants cannot redeem you and I. It takes the blood. And we go back through this chapter. Go back and read the book of Leviticus. I know you read it when, you're trying, when you try to go to sleep. <coughs> I understand that. But I want you to notice when you read there in the book of Leviticus and it talks about the sacrifice of an animal. Here's what it tells you to do. It tells the father. It tells the father of the home that he's got to do this. He's got to place his hand upon that sacrifice, and here's what he does. He, he cuts that sacrifice's throat that that animal may die. What's he doing? Why is all this? It's to realize my sin and your sin comes at a cost. It didn't cost you a tater, by the way. You see, that's that, that's that fruit of the ground but it cost the life. That's the blood. The blood, that's the life. It cost the life of an animal, but our sin didn't cost the life of a bull or a goat. It cost the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's why when you handle these animals, folks, don't do like you see on these hunting videos. You see this, some, some young boy, some young girl, they kill their first animal, and what do they do? Well, they'll take the blood, and they'll smear it all over the face, and then they start, uh, start hollering like a banshee. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says cover the blood with the dust of the earth. To do that, that's what the pagans do. We're not to do that. We're to take the blood seriously. Even, even the blood of these animals. You see, because it's now given its, your, its life for your life. What do you mean? Well, you're going to eat it. You're going to partake of it. And it's going to give you the benefits of that. 
You see, the blood. He's, and, and, and by the way, he, here's what the Hebrews chapter number 9 verse 22 said. He said, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. It's purged with blood. Then he says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. Now, a lot, that's, that's where the Bible stops. We, we like to say of sins, we're adding to the word of God when we say that. There's no remission of, of our guilt. There's no remission. And he said here, without that shedding of blood, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's done for you and I. If you're here this morning and you realize you're lost and without Christ, you're, in your, you're still in your trespasses and sin, there's a way out. But it's through the blood. It's through the blood. And can I say, if we sing this song, there's power in the blood. Yes. Wonder working power. There's power in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you mean? Well, it redeems you and I. What do you mean by redeemed? To be redeemed means to be brought out of or bought out of slavery. Well, I wasn't a slave. Yes, you were. I was too. We, we was all a slave at one time to sin. Yes. We was all on that auction block, so to speak. Yes. But Christ, before the foundations of the world, said, I'll buy him. I'll pay the price. I'll do it. I'll give my blood for those, even those that will reject me, even those that will spit on me, even those that, that will revile me. And Brother Scott, or it may have been Brother Sammy this morning, even that child molester that we would like to really do some awful things to, God will save. The worst of sin. He would have saved uh, Adolf Hitler if Adolf Hitler would have come to Christ. And we see here, it's the blood. We are all slaves to sin. And Christ done this. He, he bought us out with his blood. That means he redeemed you. I love that. I don't want to call it a story because it's not. It's an account of Ruth and Boaz. What an account in the Bible that gives us about God's redeeming love. Isn't that wonderful? And we see here, 1 Peter chapter number 1, here's what, here's what Peter said. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible, uh, corruptible things like silver and gold. In other words, he didn't buy you with money. He didn't buy you with something that could be earned or something that could be bought. He said, from your vain conversation, that's your life, that's not our talk, but sometimes our talk is vain, isn't it? He said, received by the traditions from your fathers, he said, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish, he said, and without spot, Christ is who paid the price. Here, even in the book of Le Leviticus here, we find that he's given us a picture of what Christ done for you and I. Right. Good works, good intentions, it's not going to free you from slavery. It won't do it. You can work hard as a slave and still be a slave. You can have good intentions as a slave and still be a slave. Jesus paid the price to free you from that. It's his blood. Can I ask you a question this morning? Anybody here ever get tired of being a slave? Now, I'm not talking about working around the house and doing all menial stuff. I'm talking about this thing of these of the world coming against a child of God. I'm talking about the things of the world. Maybe you're not a child of God. Maybe you're here as you're lost and you're trying to find your way. You're trying to find what God, hey, you're, you're just, uh, we're just looking for the way. And can I say, the way is Christ Jesus. Yes. Are you tired of being a slave? Are you tired of all these things? Can I say, come to Christ Jesus? Yes. Come to him. You see, salvation. Salvation doesn't come from learning lessons about the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It's good to know. It's good to know these things, but salvation doesn't come by knowing. Salvation comes by receiving the gift that Christ is offering, his blood that was shed upon Calvary. You see, salvation only comes through that. Oh, it's a bloody way. It's a glory way, according to Paul. I should have not glory, save in the cross. Not only does it redeems us, but it brings us nigh. It brings us close to God. Folks, I don't know. This thing, these last few years, they've been pretty tough, haven't they? This thing of COVID and all this other stuff, and I'll be honest with you, when that, when that stuff first hit, nobody knew what to do. If you ever had, do you ever wish you had do-overs? Go, go back and do things over again? There'd be a lot of things I'd do over that I didn't do during them first few, for that first two years of COVID. But he said, it brings us nigh. It brings us up close to the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said in Ephesians chapter number two, verse number 13, here's what he says, but now in Christ Jesus, whom ye were sometimes were afar off. Have you ever felt like you've been, that, that you're just, a th Jesus is a thousand miles away from you? That you couldn't find him, even in the dark with a flashlight? Have you ever felt that way, that you was away, uh, far away from the Lord Jesus Christ? But he said, are made nigh. How are we made nigh to the Lord Jesus Christ? By the blood, he said, of Christ. Amen. You see, that's what his blood did. He said, we were alienated from God. When, our, when we were in our sins, we were afar off from him. But when we were saved by the blood, by the Lord Jesus Christ, that brought us back close. And then he says, he redeems us, it brings us nigh, and it gives us peace. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to have peace in this time? Sometimes, folks, we're, we're living in an unpeaceful time, but we can have peace. We can have peace, and here's what it does. It means that we're no longer... We're no longer at enmity or at war or against God. There's been a reconciliation that took place. What does that word peace mean? It's a state of reconciliation between two parties at variance. Yeah. And I'm talking about me and God. Or let me rephrase that, God and me. I need to put him first. God and me. And what's he done? He, he brought that enmity. And now we're no longer separated. But he's brought peace and he's given me that peace. I like what Paul said in Colossians 1 and 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. And by him to reconcile. Now I like what he said here. All things. All things. Unto himself by him. I say whether they be things in earth. Down here. That's me and you. That's, 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 that's the world, that's humanity, or in heaven. He can reconcile all things back into himself yeah. by his blood. You see, it's the blood. the blood. The blood redeems, the blood draws us nigh. The blood gives us peace, and the blood cleanses us from all sin. Isn't that good? That's the blood, what, what can... Wash me. What, what can, nothing but the blood of Jesus can make me clean as white as snow. He says, John, <laughs> Paul, uh, Scott, I thought he might read this morning. First John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. How many of you, how many of you grew up playing outside? See, the time we grew up, we didn't have smartphones, cell phones, didn't have none of them phones. If you was going to use a phone you was on the road, you had to go to a pay phone. But growing up, what did you have to do? Matthew, you had to go outside and play. And you had to go outside, and you went outside, and you got dirty. And you'd get grass stains all over your clothes. And you'd come back in, go ahead and get ready for a whipping because you done got your clothes dirty. And your mom would say, 
I'll not never get all them stains out of them clothes. But Heather, he won't say. My blood won't remove those stains. Yeah. You won't hear him say, My blood can't take care of what you've done. You won't hear him say, Oh, you've been too far. You've been too bad. You've gone too far. You won't hear him say that. Here's what I hear him say. My blood, my blood will wash away that sin. Amen. That's right. There's not a sin. There's not a stain that his blood won't cleanse us from. You see, it's the blood. And he says the blood. It redeems. The blood brings us nigh. The blood gives us peace. The blood cleanses us. And we find here the blood can give us the power to overcome. Hallelujah. The blood, the blood, it can give us the power to overcome that old, uh, that old devil, that old Satan. It gives us the power. And he says that you and I, he, Paul talks about it in the book of Ephesians chapter number 6 that, you know, he talks about the, the uh, warfare and the armor of God. He says, for we in verse number 12 of chapter number 6, he said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He said, you and I, folks, we're in a fight with the devil. But you see, we can't win against him, but Christ can. He already, you know, he's already won. He has already won. We just need to accept him. We need to be washed in the blood. If we want to overcome anything, it's going to take the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ working inside of you and I. He tells us in Revelation chapter number 12, Verse number 11, and they overcame him. Who's that? That's Satan. That's Satan. That's, that's the devil. He, if you go back and read the previous verse, it talks about the one that stands and accuser, the accuser of the brethren. That's Satan. He said, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Folks, if we're going to overcome anything, it's going to be by the blood of the Lamb. He said, by the blood of the Lamb... And not only by the blood of the Lamb, but by the word of their testimony, I've been saved. Hallelujah. I love those songs that we sung. I love that. I'm a child of the King, don't you? Amen. I like that. Thank you, Lord. He said, by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. So we see here, we can overcome. You go read the book of Revelation. They are those three... Anti-God, by the way. You, we, we know that we serve a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But they are a triune enemy out there. You've got that dragon that symbolizes in the book of Revelation. That's Satan. He's an anti-father. Then you've got that, in the, I believe it's chapter number 13, that talks about the beast of the sea that comes out of the sea. That's that Antichrist. That's the anti-son. Then he talks about the beast coming out of the earth. That symbolizes the false prophet. That's the anti-Holy Spirit. See, we got all that. But see, we're, that's who we're fighting against. But let me say, we have not the ability to fight upon our own, in our own way. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. We need the blood. If we're going to overcome, folks, if we're ever going to do anything, it's got to be through the blood. Then we see the blood is precious to the Lord. It's precious to God. You know the devil hates the blood. He hates the blood. You remember when Christ was telling him he was getting ready to go to the cross? Now, Brother Sammy, I'm paraphrasing here too. He was getting ready to go to the cross and Peter said, uh, -uh we ain't going to let you go there. You'll not go to the cross. What was Jesus' response? Get behind me, Satan. Yeah. Why? Because Satan knows there's power in the blood. Right. He knows 
that Christ, that you and I, if we're going to overcome him, it's going to have to be through the blood. Can I ask you a question in closing? What is the blood to you today? Is it a gory scene that's just repulsive to you and I? I hope not. I hope it's a glorious scene that we can glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Is the blood to you this morning hated or scoffed at or, or, may, or maybe even ignored? Don't ignore the drawing and the wooing of the Holy Spirit because he may not continue to knock. I couldn't tell, I could not, I would not even tell you how many times. Aren't you glad God is gracious that he comes to us more than just one time? Amen. But there's going to be a day when you may no longer hear that knock on your door. There may be a day when you will no longer. So, so is it, is it, is it something that we just don't want to hear about? Or is the blood precious to you this morning? Just as a father, the blood is precious to God. It ought to, be, it ought to be precious to you and I. We ought to handle the blood carefully. Yes. Why? Brother Scott, because that's how Christ proved his love for you and I. He shed his blood on Calvary's cross for you and for me. What a gift. The blood brings. Would you stand? Heather, would you come? We'd ask you this morning, what is the blood? Has the blood covered you in your sins this morning? Have you received that free gift of salvation? Maybe you're here this morning and you haven't. And God's dealing with your heart about the blood. Would you come be saved? Would you come receive the blood, be washed from all your sins? When I say all your sins, that's just not what you've done in the past. That's just not what you're going to do today. But that's what you may do in the future. He said from all sins. He doesn't specify past, present, or future. That's all. Would you come this morning? Maybe you're here and you've received the blood, but you've been, I've been maybe neglected the blood. We can get that right too with him. Would you come this morning as they sing?